All right. Well, good morning. So you came to see me about a month or so ago. Actually, it was about uh, February 10th. Okay. And you were on narcotics for a long time. Eight years. Eight years. And Eight years and four months. Okay. And you and how was your experience with narcotics overall? Well, overall, in the beginning, it was very helpful because I was going through a terrible emotional time, losing my mom. I lost my best friend two weeks later. Mm -hmm. I lost the dream of working with my son in Seattle because he needed to be the man and be the boss. So I was never going to be there. Um, so I had a lot of losses, significant losses, right. uh, at, at the same time. Um, and I didn't have as much of a support system as I do now. And then so when you're on the opiates for a while, for those eight years and four months, yeah. how did they make you feel? At first it was helpful. And, and then what happened? And, first, and then it became habitual. And as the years went on, I believe that I was having a lot of the pain that uh, opiates cause that they found now that opiates actually seduce you into believing you have much more pain than you do. Right. And um, I got to a point where I was, uh, I'm a PhD in English, I couldn't talk. Right. I couldn't speak, I was uh, falling asleep when people spoke, spoke to me. Um, I didn't want to get out of my bed. I'd withdrawn from people because I didn't feel I could cope, could cope with a social situation right. at all. Um, and I didn't want my family to know how bad I was. But I have an assistant who lives with me and has son, done so for over 10 years now. And she began to attack me mm -hmm. uh, and say, you can't do this. If you continue to do this, I'm going to leave and not take care of you anymore. I won't watch you die. You're going to die. So then, we came to, so then you came to see me back in February and we started taking a different tact with your medications. Absolutely. Well, I... You gave me some medications, right. which I took a little bit, and they they were hard for me to take with the opiates. My body reacted oddly, and and then um, and and then so I went off the opiates mm -hmm. uh, about ten days after I saw you. Mm -hmm. I went cold turkey, and just went off of them. And the first week was really hard, mm -hmm. and it was really painful. Mm -hmm. You know, all the opiates were in every cell of my body after eight years of taking them. It was, um, but it, there was no question in my mind. Right. that I wanted to live. So now that you've seen me and we've done some injections for you or some other things, how how are things changed for you? <laughs> I'm completely alive again. Every day almost, there. now it's not so much, but at first, there were, every day there were awakenings. Things that I had been dulled to I in in when I was on the opiates, it's like all my senses were completely dulled. I thought I needed new glasses. I don't, I, but I couldn't see. I couldn't hear. I couldn't. All my senses became more and more dulled. I went further and further into this sort of semi-coma state. Now, I, since I once I got through the first maybe ten days of detox, I started to think and really be able to process things not only that were happening to me now and why this happened, why I allowed this to happen to me, and how I was seduced by the opiates, um, but but things from my past. Uh, that I hadn't even seen before. Mm. It was a time of self-reflection, of turning inward, and focusing on myself, and really looking at particulars. So when people are going to look at this video who have been on opiates for a while, and would you say that there's another way of helping you? Oh, for sure. If you hadn't been here, I wouldn't be able to do it. I knew you would catch me. We had had a prior relationship mm -hmm. be before the opiates. Mm -hmm. We had been, uh, you'd been working with me. And it wasn't enough. I got seduced by, you know, uh, by going to someone else and yeah. getting a second opinion and saying, you know, I can make it better. And, and, and we're also doing this thing called P-STEM with the ear wonderful. thing. Wonderful. What that, do you think about that? Well, <laughs> I haven't even told you this, so this is new information for you. I've been sleeping at night. Excellent. Now, when you go through detox, I've learned from other people who've gone through detox of, from alcohol and sure. other things. Um, that you get insomnia yeah. and it's disturbing to be sleep deprived as your body is going through this You're under all this stress and then you don't sleep with the peace stem. I've had uh, Probably a good six or seven hours sleep a night, wow. which is fabulous going from only two or three hours or sometimes not at all oh. um, During the early parts of detox. I was awake all the time oh. uh, partly because of the amitriptyline, yeah. but and the serotonin syndrome 
if people don't understand that, what that is, you can explain that to That's them. That's right, later. later. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but you know, I, I, to be able to sleep, it was been has been phenomenal. Wonderful. Now, the other things that I've just observed is maybe um, um, a reduction in inflammation in my body. Mm -hmm. um, that when I do a lot of walking, I'm not in as much pain as I, I was a week ago or right. ten days ago Excellent. before I had the beast in. Right. So I've noticed that. So I think there's probably been an increase in circulation. Perfect, as Excellent. well. Um, so I'm finding that the the things that they predicted would happen are I'm happening. See, I'm seeing it happen. I'm like, oh, oh, that's what's happening. Wonderful. I saw that and that, that was going to happen. Right. Excellent. So it's been really helpful. I recommend it to Excellent. people who are going through after they get through the initial stages yeah. of detox when this can be. And make an a, still make a pr an appreciable difference. Sure. Yeah. Well, thank